Hey there guys, Spexy here and welcome back to the channel. I am in Scrap Mechanic today as you can see and a lot of you have been waiting for me to build something in Scrap Mechanic and this is something rather special so hopefully you're going to like it. Now you saw from the introduction that I have the 20th Century Fox logo right here and that is because today's build has something to do with 20th Century Fox or at least a 20th Century Fox movie. So if you know movies from 20th Century Fox, you might be able to guess what it is. Now over here is a space base, that's a bit of a clue. This is definitely something to do with sci-fi. So without further ado, let's get inside this garage here. Yep, this is a garage, and we'll take a look at it. And this, my friends, is the Wayland Industries M577 APC, as built for the US Colonial Marines. And yeah, this is, pretty awesome actually it's a massive build uh, you'll see it better when we get outside this thing is armed to the teeth and built like a tank because it pretty much is a tank if you like um, now I said before that this is a garage and it is but you'll notice I have a gravity module over here and you're probably wondering why I have that there now this is for very good reason see I built this garage and I wondered how I was gonna get the door on this so I had a whole side of this into a door uh, now the problem with that was that this is actually made of bling blocks and as such it doesn't really want to open because they're so damn heavy. Now what I found was if I attach a gravity mod to this then the whole damn thing becomes as light as a feather and therefore I can actually raise this the same as any other door. So if I open this here you will see the uh, gravity mod turns on there and there it goes. So the gravity module can be found in the Durf mod pack. It's pretty awesome stuff because of this. I mean, obviously it makes crafts fly or become zero gravity and so on and so forth. But for this build here in particular, it worked quite well for making this weigh nothing and therefore open like a regular door. So yeah, all you have to do is basically hook that up to the button along with the controller and there we go. So let's, uh, let's have a look then. This has got a lot of connections going on. The web on this thing, is immense as you can see as are the wheels there they're pretty damn awesome and i made those sort of out of different pieces there they look pretty cool i think they look pretty good now on the side here we have a sliding door but we'll take a look at that a little bit later i don't want to show you in there just yet instead we've got to get this thing outside this garage so we probably want to go in the driver's door just here so we've got this nice thin driver's door that I built out of panel parts there. It works most of the time, it does get stuck a few times. I mean, you know, things do get stuck in Scrap Mechanic and that is definitely one of them. Uh, you'll find that that happens with a few of the things on this build. However, most of the time they work without a hitch. So we have a driver's seat here, we have a co-pilot seat here, and we have a comm seat over here, or weapon seat there. We have a little med bay over here and if I press this button here, it drops down a little bed there for the med bay, which is all pretty cool. Uh, we also have these seats lined up across the walls here, as they were in the movie. Now, if I was to uh, press this, it raises the bar up into the air. You can then sit in the seat and press in the one button. We'll bring that bar down to just below your arms there, and you are, well, I guess, locked in, if you like. You're not, but it looks like you are. So let's press that again and jump out of our seat and there you go so those are the same back down there they're all the same uh yeah but we're going to take this thing out and then i'll show you around the rest of it so jumping into the driver's seat then you'll see these little handles come down there little driving handles now i don't actually reach them as it stands and i can't exactly see out the windscreen either but if i press one it raises me up and i just about can that's about as good as you're going to get for a view out of this thing however when you're outside you can see him in there <laughs> which is pretty cool. So yeah, that works pretty well. I can shut the door with two there. And if I drive out, hopefully this is gonna go down this ramp. I can't really zoom out any more than that. Let's hope we can get outside here. And, oh, we got caught on the door. We got caught on the door. Oh, are we gonna get out? Now I never had trouble with that before. <laughs> Ironic that I will be making a video when I get trouble with the door. Okay, let's see, can I actually? Oh, I'm out, but I'm going to go off the ramp. No, 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 no. Back, 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 back. There we go. <laughs> yeah, right. Now you want to steer it, Spexy. There you go. And down the ramp. That was nearly uh, failure. 
Yeah, we got out there. That's pretty cool. And as you can see, this is a custom color. You won't get this color in Scrap Mechanic. This is one that I use the uh, mod tool uh, from Brent Batch to actually do this and painted the whole thing in kind of like a combat dark green, almost a grey green, which is kind of the colour that it was in the movie. Now as you may have seen the movie with Sigourney Weaver, yeah it's an awesome movie, if you haven't watched it, go and watch it. This thing is as about as uh, close to the actual thing as I could get it to be. I kind of seem to be stuck here, hold on a second. It's quite a wide, wide wheel based uh, monster and it does get stuck on some of the bumps and lumps around. Now I do have a thrust which I can press 5 and it will actually, sorry 6, and it will actually help me through some of these. But it is pretty fast, so you don't want to use it for long, it just kind of knocks you out there, like there you go. Okay, so, as I said, it's about as close as I can get it to the actual one in the movie. If I just park it up over here for just a second. I'm going to jump out and then you can see what it's all about. So let's take our seat down, jump out of the driver's seat there. And then we want to open this door and take a look at the outside. Now it's in the light. Oh, I need to get back in there. To open that, then two, there it is. Oh, it didn't get stuck. That's cool. Okay, so out of the driver's door then. So we have a handle on the outside of this to open it from the outside or to close it from the outside there. The wheels all pretty cool. The detail, I got it as close as I can to what I saw on the pictures that I looked, up, uh, looked for on the internet. On the back here we have a gun, you'll see that a little bit later on, that's a big old gun there. Okay, we also have these things on the side here which you'll see what they are a little later on. And we have of course the sliding door, which now I'm going to show you. So pressing this opens the door which then slides along and we can jump in. So the command center is here. All the computers around there, again, as close as I could get it to the actual one in the movie. So that's all pretty cool, and that controls a lot of the guns, like the back cannon over there. And another little secret, which I'll show you as well. So let's jump into the co-pilot seat then. Now from here, we can use the Gatling cannon, which we can rotate left and right like so. And when I press the one button, it fires off the guns there, which is all pretty cool. Uh, we also have the two button which will open up these panels on the back there like so and pressing the three button will do that a smoke screen yep this does come equipped with a smoke screen uh, it says so in the actual schematics which i found on the internet so i thought i'd put one in since there is a mod for that now which you can see there on the screen you can find that on steam workshop which is pretty cool it creates this smoke screen there which I thought I could throw in scenes as it's there. And they don't use it in the movie, but it does have one according to the schematics on the internet. So yeah, what else can we do in this seat? Well, nothing actually. That's all you can do from that seat. That's pretty cool. So let's jump out of there and then into the last seat. Now, oh, let me just get out there. Okay, so this is the uh, actual command center, if you like. This is where you control all of the weapons from. So jumping in there, if I press the one button, you will see that my chair turns around like so. And that's pretty cool, right? It turns me towards my command center. Yeah, all pretty cool. But as well as that, if I was to be looking at that from outside here, it also raises the gun on the back there, which raises over the top and into a firing position. Now, I apologize for the glitchy bearings there. It's normally pretty smooth. Now you're probably wondering how this was achieved and to do that I used a suspension piece attached to this bearing here which then takes the whole of the gun placement up through the roof in a 90 degree angle and yeah that's how it goes up there because suspension can go through parts. Now if I go outside I'll give you an idea of what it looks like from out there. If we just go around the back I've got this rail system as you can see there and that's what it's got in the actual movie. I've tried to make it look as though it's got one here. Let's see if I can get up this ladder here. Come on Spectre you can do this. Get on the ladder. Oh come on and let's try again and there we go. And as you can see then the rail comes up and over the top, much like it does in the actual movie. But in this case it's not using that at all, it's actually using the channel between the rails and that's where the suspension goes up in that channel just there. And it all works pretty well and looks like it should. I'm happy with how that turned out. Okay, so let's jump back down and into that seat again. Let's get in the command center. There we go. Let's press one then to bring the gun back up and put it into the firing position. And from here we can press the two key to fire the first barrel and the three key to fire the second barrel. And that works pretty well as you can see. 
we also have a rather nifty extra feature, which again, doesn't get used in the movie, but it is in the schematics, and that is these bad boys. Now these are mortars, which uh, again, it says that it does have them, and it even shows where they are on the blueprints there. So I've put them in where they should be, and if you raise them up with the four key, you can then fire them with the five and the six. And it's probably just as well that we're parked a little bit away from those hills because if I was any closer, it'd probably blow the front off this vehicle because these things are pretty damn powerful explosives. And to avoid any nasty incidents and blowing yourself to smithereens, I've made it so they only work when they're extended and raised. And to do that, I've connected this sensor here to a couple of logic blocks. The first logic block sees that the sensor is inactive when raised, and therefore sends that signal to the second logic block, and when you press the trigger, enables you to fire them. If the sensor can see the body, then therefore the first logic block is inactive and it won't allow you to fire. If that made any sense, I'm confusing myself now. So they only fire when they're up, that's all you need to know. When you put them down, you cannot use them. So that's good. Health and safety first, kids. There was something I didn't show you, I think, in the driver's seat. So the driver, uh, yes, I get the one key which raises me up, the two key that opens this, the three key which does the sliding door, which is cool, the four key which turns on the spotlight there, and the five key that turns on the normal lights, and then the six key, which uses the thruster, which kind of just gets you out of trouble. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Or puts you into trouble, like, like so. Oh, shit! Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not supposed to work like this. Uh, okay, let's jump out of this thing. Can I actually get out? Oh, no, I'm stuck in the wheel. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Come on, get out of here, Spexy. Don't let it get me now. Can I drop it there? Come on, come on. Let me drop it. There we go. That's cool. <laughs> Let me just um, open this door again. There we go. Jump in to here. Uh, shut the door with two. And let's go over to the moon base to see if I can avoid the hills and see if I don't get stuck. Hopefully I'll get over there. Now the wheels don't turn too much, but you will see, as it says in the actual schematics for this thing, both front and back wheels do have an axis. They do turn slightly, but not a lot. Otherwise it takes away the room inside. And each of these axles is connected to a WASD converter, meaning that I can restrict its movement to only about 15% each axle. That therefore giving me about a 30% angle on both sets being used at the same time. And that gives me a little bit more room inside the vehicle due to it not needing so much room for the wheels to turn underneath. So let's see if we can get over to the command center over there, that dome structure over there. It seems quite a way away, but I think we can do this. And as you'll notice, this is a quite a low vehicle. It's very low down to the ground, and that's the same as it was in the movie. Now, it's not a very practical vehicle when all said and done, because it will get caught on a lot of mounds and rocks and things like that, which I'm sure the actual vehicle would as well, due to the fact that it's such a long wheelbase and actually so low to the ground. I am getting to the base here, it isn't too far away, and uh, looks like we've got a quite clear run, we should be okay with these small mounds, it's only the big ones that really give us a problem, now there is a little bit of suspension as you see there, I can't give it much, because it does look kind of silly when the wheels bounce up and down too much, so yeah, but it works quite well, and we are nearly there, let's see if we can actually get this up and on to one of these uh, launch pads here. Okay, should be fairly simple. All we've got to do is just line ourselves up now. Nice and easy. Yep, looking good. Turning okay, yep. It's all in sight now. All I've got to do is rev it up a bit, get up this hill. It all should go to plan if... Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. There's that uh, low profile again. We're kind of stuck. I think I need to use my thrust. Let's put a bit of thrust. If we can get those wheels to touch there, it might just push us up. And there we go. Oh, nearly, yep. A little bit more, a little bit more thrust, and we are on. Yep, stop! That'll do ya. There we go. So there it is. The USCM M577 APC from the Alien movie, or Aliens movie, and it is pretty cool. 
everything works as it should. It has all of the armament that the actual machine does in the movie and a few bits that are not in the movie but I mentioned on the website and I've tried to include it all and I hope you like it now. I'm sorry for all the glitching. I know there's so many bearings and that's why it does it. Uh, but yeah, it all came out pretty cool. Now, I'm sorry if this crashes anyone's computers. It does use a lot of mods and it does use a lot of bearings and a lot of controllers. And it's got a massive web, so it will be a little laggy on some. But I wanted to get it to do everything and that's the only way I could. So yeah, there it is. And I hope you enjoyed it. Now, on top of this, I do have a special second build, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And we are back, and I have a second build, as I said, also from the Aliens movie, and as you can see in the distance there, you may have seen it before, this is a power loader, of course, as piloted by Sigourney Weaver, or Ripley, in the Aliens movie, and I wanted to make this thing to scale for our dwarf here, and it isn't too bad, I think you'll find. Now, Luwak the Great made one of these, I do remember a little while ago, it was a lot bigger than this thing. I wanted to make it the right scale for the character, and when I jump in, you'll see that it kind of is, if I can just get in there, there we go. Not too bad at all. Now we can walk this around and steer it with a suspension glitch steering, which is all inside. The uh, walking itself is done kind of like my wind-up toys, so it's kind of a, a just a rotation walk. It isn't actually walking the way an actual power loader should in the movie, but this is as close as I could get it. And the stride per step isn't bad either, meaning that we actually do get quite a little bit of distance per step that we walk, and it works quite well for the best part. Now, all the detailing, I've tried to make as close as I can to the actual one in the movie, um, but made it small, and it works pretty well. Now, as you can see on the back here, there is this little red bit there behind the flashing light. That is a stabilizer. It's kind of a gyroscope, in fact, and it's on the Legend mod. Now, with that, I could raise one of these legs up, and if it tries to fall over, you will notice I push back up, because I've connected that uh, gyroscope to some thrusters, which means that as I lean, the thrusters are actually operate and push me back up like that combined with the suspension glitch uh, stabilizers on the back there by Brent Batch means that this thing is pretty good and doesn't fall over so yeah all works pretty well now there is another little nifty little trick that you can't see because it uses invisible blocks so let me just jump out and show you what I mean invisible parts if you like and these if you look here you'll see I've connected a tube to the bottom there and I've got the same rotation on my bearings as I have at the top of the legs meaning that it holds them in place at the bottom the same as the top now without that the legs kind of went round out of sync and then ended up falling over and going all over the place whereas with that it kind of keeps them in check so they can't do that and it works pretty well. Now, of course, it's invisible, so you can't see it. And it doesn't look like it's there at all, which all works quite well and adds to the illusion. So there you go. It all works pretty nifty. And the whole thing isn't that bad and looks pretty good. I think you'll agree. Now, on top of that, you'd expect the arms to work. And they do. So I can raise one up and lower it down with the one and two key there. I can raise the other arm up and lower it down with the three and four key. Then five, six, seven, and eight do the actual bottom of the arm up and down where we have control over that there so we can straighten our arms if we want and put them over our head why don't we why don't we try that let's uh, let's raise our arms up over our heads like so and then we should be able to extend let's put this up here extend the uh, bottom of the arms with the six and eight and uh, we can put our arms above our heads. There we go. Woohoo! Okay, so it all works pretty well. Uh, bringing them down again then. Let's uh, let's just uh, put them back a little bit and uh, bring them down with two and four. And yeah, it all works pretty well. Now also we can do the grip, if you like, with the... S well, where are we? Sorry, with the nine turns the hands around. I couldn't remember myself then for a second. Yeah, nine turns the hands around and 10 actually pincers them in there to actually grab things. And it can actually grab things. Check this out.
Okay, so I haven't got a Class 2 license like Ripley to drive these things, and that's pretty obvious from my display there, but I did it. Spexy for the win. Okay guys, there they are, today's builds, the Power Loader and the APC, or M577 APC, both from the Aliens movie by 20th Century Fox. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then why not spank the hell out of that thumbs up button, and don't forget to subscribe for more great content, and until the next time, see you soon, and bye for now.